Hey everybody, Steve Brzezbrowski here. Um, been a while since I posted some videos and I want to start posting some videos again. So here we go. I get a lot of questions from people around the country which um, relate usually to promotional preparation or maybe sometimes struggles they're having at the firehouse um, or whatever it is related to the fire service, but a lot of them promotional preparation questions. Um, and most of them are pretty straightforward questions, but every now and then, I'll get some questions that just really catch me off guard. I'm going to talk about that one for the focus of this episode right here. Most people usually want to know how to better prepare themselves for the test mostly, which I, as you know me, if you know me by now, you realize don't just prepare for the test, prepare for the position, because then no matter what they throw at you in the test should be, you know, not a big deal. You know, it should be in your wheelhouse for the most part. Well, every now and then I'll get a question sent to me that just sort of, um, I don't know, I just, I don't want to say it blows my mind, but I guess nothing amazes me anymore. But in, simply put, one person reached out recently and said, hey, I'm reaching out to see if you've put together a list of sample answers to oral board questions um, when it comes to answering the 25 captain oral interview questions. On my website, code3firetraining.com, there's a free stuff link, and I've got a lot of free resources on there, documents, handouts, presentations, obviously videos that I've done. And one of those items on the documents um, in, as a document is 25 Captain Oral interview questions, which there's also some other questions for battalion chief and other ranks and everything else. But really, they're common questions that pretty much everybody gets asked around the country. I mean, I've had people look at those questions and from all parts of the country and say, hey, those are pretty much the same questions. Right, because most departments aren't really finding new ways to ask oral board questions. Or they're asking questions that are maybe slightly different, but it's the same context um, or concept of what those questions were. So getting back to what he's asking for, he wanted a list of sample answers. Um, he also wanted some key points, and I'll touch on that in a second, but I, Rarely do people ask for sample answers, and I've thought about that because I've read some promotional preparation books that have obviously questions. Those are the easy part. The hard part is the sample answers, and um, I wanted to focus that here because I do get every now and then people basically, without maybe saying it exactly, it's like, give me the answers to the test without having any desire to you know, go through the process, prepare, study, like pretty much most of us have had to do to get promoted, but Sometimes people want that easy way out. Um, and I mean, maybe it's the world we live in, society we live in. Everyone says everyone wants things now. I get it. You know, nobody wants to work their way to the top the hard way like it used to work. But back to this question of what are the answers? Now, I struggled with that because I, I'm, I mean, I appreciate someone reaching out to me. So I want to be respectful and tactful of them and tactful to them in my response. So in short, I go, hey, thanks for reaching out to me and checking out my resources on my website. But I don't list sample answers to those questions. And, I'll, and I'm obviously going to share why, because why is important. So I said I don't list sample answers there. And here's a few reasons why. Because number one, I don't care what oral board question you're getting asked, whether it's for a firefighter test, a captain's test battalion chief, all the way up to fire chief, or really any interview question for any position, any type of work around the country. Most questions are usually open-ended questions to really get you, the candidate, to really speak. Explain your thought process, your justification, which that's what most candidates struggle with is the thought process, and the justification, because they either ramble on and know specific order and they don't even answer the question a lot of time or they don't justify or support um, what they're trying to sell. I mean, I hate to sound like a salesperson, but you are. So there's usually a question in front of the raters that are on an oral board, but there's usually no sample answers or on an oral board, there's usually no expected answers. Now, some oral boards will have the questions and then maybe some suggested good answers but usually it leaves it up to the oral board raters to be able to come up with what is a awesome answer, not so awesome answer, average answer, <laughs> lower than anything answer. Now, as I mentioned this candidate, there's no right answers for most questions because again, they want to get in your head and there's no, you know, it's as simple as that. And when I, I told him, I go, take a look at those 25 questions, which I didn't invent those questions. I just took them from over years of experience. And again, it's they're not copyright or anything else, just common oral board questions. 
now I said, if you look at most of those questions, they are open-ended with, without finite answers, you know, meaning an entry-level firefighter candidate is not going to get asked in an oral interview, or at least I hope they're not going to get asked, how many firehouses does our fire department have? Why? I mean, because think about it. Well, number one, there's a number of reasons. Who really cares? You know, we all care and love our departments. I get it. But that's something that's trainable and teachable. Yes, we want them to do their research, their homework beforehand and show they actually show some love. I get it. Which that answer to the question about visiting firehouses, that should come out obviously during their you know, question that they get asked, tell us about yourself. But anyway, we're not going to usually ask those finite questions like how many firehouses because, you know, no one cares. All it shows is the candidate can regurgitate facts from a website that may or may not even be up to date because many websites, go take a look at any of your own website. Heck, I can look at my own personal website and probably find it out of date because I haven't had the time to update it. No different than a fire department or any other organization. So things sometimes change in reality versus what's in technology. But anyway, um, Everyone who answers it, and even if they do answer correctly, oh, there's 15 firehouses with the Santa Clara County Fire Department. Okay, what did that really tell me that the candidate can regurgitate information they found on the website? So what? Again, it's trainable, teachable stuff versus getting in their head and getting to know more about what whatever we want them to be asked. Um, and, and it doesn't separate somebody from the next candidate. Um, and let's say someone answered, well, there's 14 firehouses or 16 when in fact there's 15. Am I going to fail somebody and not want to hire somebody, especially in today's world when so few people want to work, it seems like, even in the fire department and we're all struggling to get quality candidates? Okay, if someone came in and they misspoke on the number of firehouses, maybe they're nervous, maybe they read it wrong, maybe they just, I don't know, threw something out of their ass. That's something we can teach them and train them on as long as they're sincere and good nature. But anyway, so we typically will then ask, instead of a finite question with a definite answer, you know, how have you prepared for the position? You know, it's an open-ended question, allows you to share your training education experience, as well as, like I mentioned, you visited firehouses, researched the city, researched the fire department, and so forth. So back to that question, I go, there are no right answers. And think about this. If I were to list those 25 questions on the website with 25 sample answers or what Steve thinks are great suggested answers, okay, the World Wide Web is called the World Wide Web for a reason. Everybody has access to it. So if I'm listing suggested answers for those questions, some will take the easy, lazy way out and just use my answers, which I don't give a shit. Shit, go for it. But you're not me and I'm not you. But some people would do that. Smart, prepared, honest, hardworking individuals might take those answers and maybe hopefully add their own flavor of flair to them, which is, again, the whole key to success is personalizing your answers. But again, the oral board doesn't usually have specific answers in front of them. So then you're going to come across maybe as, re, um, I don't know, clone answers or common answers that everybody else is selling. Because again, it needs to be personalized and unique to be making you stand out. So if they, if I put you, if I put sample answers out there, everybody would be using them. Not everybody, but a lot of people. So then they would be just generic and they wouldn't get you above that 70% score. I mean, when I was a brand new one, excuse me, not brand new. When I was a wannabe firefighter back in the early 90s, and I was looking at oral board questions, again, the same questions that are used today for the most part, they really don't change. I had no problem answering how I prepared or what are my strengths. But when it came to like, what are my weaknesses? Of course, I struggled with that because I didn't want to sound like a weakness was a deal breaker. Like if I was going for a fire chief position and I say, well, my greatest weakness is I'm not a people person or I've got shitty listening skills. I'm a recovering out. I'm an alcoholic, but I'm recovering right now. I'm in step 11 of the 12 step program. So I'm almost there. Well, if you're hiring me for a fire chief, probably deal breakers because you need someone with good listening skills, someone with good people skills, you get it. But back to that question, what's your greatest weakness? I remember asking all my instructors and all the firefighters that I came in contact with of what should I use for that greatest weakness? Because I don't want it to be bad or deal breaker, but I want it to be sort of okay, but not bad. And I remember a wise instructor told me, Steve, if I give you the answer as well as the other students, then guess what? You're all going to be, or some of you are going to be using that answer and you're all going to sound the same. And thus your score is not going to allow you to rise to the top because you sound like all those other Shimo College students as I was at the time. So to me, the best answers come from the heart. They're unique 
and they're personalized, as I mentioned, to make you stand out. Back to that greatest weakness. Okay, I settled on time management because I didn't think it was a deal breaker, but I bet you there's probably more than one person that uses time management. But where it can at least stand out from the crowd is when you make it personalized, meaning don't just say time management's a weakness. Or on the flip side, what's your greatest strength? I'm a hard worker. Great. 25 other people said hard worker or motivated or dedicated, loyal, whatever it is. How you can make that unique is by personalizing it. I'm dedicated, and here's an example. And not just here's an example that only I can tell you because my dedication um, example is going to be different from anybody else's based on my past experiences. But then also tie it into the position. I'm dedicated. Here's a reason why. And also here's why it's critical for a whatever, insert rank here, firefighter, captain, battalion chief, whatever, to be dedicated because of this. Okay. Everyone's expecting me to be dedicated. Those above, those below, those the same rank, the customers. So those best answers come from the heart. Um, they're unique. They're personalized. Um, and like I mentioned, most oral boards don't have set answers. They just sometimes have suggested answers. Um, but again, you don't have to cover all the points to be really highly successful. You Again, those best candidates in oral interviews come from speaking from the heart and sounding unique and sounding like they actually are not rehearsing answers that they read from a book or a website or whatever else. They've actually taken the time to personalize them. Um, because ultimately, if you think about it, we don't hire pieces of paper. We don't promote pieces of paper, or at least we shouldn't be. So I know some departments check the box and hire whatever for those reasons, but we won't get to that now. But we want to hire or should want to hire and promote people that have prepared for the job, the position, the rank you're going for, not just the test. And that's why if you prepare, if you want the sample answers, then you're probably preparing for the test versus if you're preparing for the position, then you've really thought about it and you've really dug down deep into your heart and your soul about why you want it, what you've done to prepare and everything else, and you can come from the heart. So until you've been on the other side as a raider, it's really hard to appreciate that advice. I mean, 30 years ago as a wannabe firefighter, I was pissed that my instructors would not tell me, what's that greatest weakness that's going to make me look good? And then now I get it after being a Raider and then now still as an instructor and someone that helps coach and mentor people, I still get that question of what is the best answer for whatever question? There are no best answers, but the best candidates have been prepared. They know themselves inside and out. They can sell themselves by sounding sincere and making them sound different from everybody else. And that's again, what makes people rise to the top. So if you are that candidate that is seeking out answers, again, I can't blame anybody for trying, you know, shit. But if you're going to people like myself, and there's many other great people, okay, I don't want that to come across, but there's many great people out there. Um, I like to think I provide valuable advice and guidance for folks. I mean, I hope I do. I think that's what people have told me in the past. And I think there's great people that are out there also that do the same thing too. I mean, that have written books, do coaching, mentoring, website stuff, all good stuff. And I take advantage of everybody, you know, learn from everybody that's out there and not just people that are on the website, but people you encounter. But anyway, um, don't let anyone sell you a bill of goods. Meaning don't, if, so, if, if someone comes out and tells you, here's the best answers for whatever interview or tactical simulation, tactical fire ground exercise, personnel counseling scenario, role play. Here's the answers. Don't believe them because there are no answers because every department does things slightly differently and each rater of an oral board looks for different things in what they think is a good candidate. So again, you don't want to be that person coming in thinking that they, get, they just read a book or went to a class or got coached by somebody, which all are good things as long as you can personalize your answers to make them sound like they're actually coming from you and that you're tying them in the position you prepare for the position. So that's all I've got today. Hopefully that was beneficial in some capacity. Um, if there's anything I can do for you in your pursuit of not just becoming a company officer or chief officer, but whether you want to become a firefighter or any rank in between, or just have some questions to bounce off me, my website, again, code3firetraining.com. I got my cell phone, my email address on there, lots of other, I mean, a couple hundred videos to get hired, stay hired. 
get promoted, stay promoted um, as well in the free stuff link. So until the next time, be safe, be well, and um, hopefully that helped in some capacity. All right, peace out.